I was on emergency coverage. I got approached by intake. Um, there was a one-year-old who was um, at Masonic Hospital at the University of Minnesota Hospital with a skull fracture, um, presented with parents, um, and no one had an explanation for what happened to this little one or how um, she got the skull fracture. Um, on top of having the acute fracture, it was also discovered when she went through a skeletal survey that she had an old healing fracture um, on her tibia. So a completely different injury, very serious again for a very young child um, without any explanation for, for what had occurred to her. So the first thing that we always do when we get assigned a case is cross-report to law enforcement. What that means is I take a copy of the initial report that I'm given by intake and I send it over um, to the law enforcement jurisdiction. So in this specific case, it was Burnsville. So I I contacted the sergeant at Burnsville said this is what I've got they assign it then to one of their investigators and then we go forward teaming the case from there um, so myself and the detective that was assigned the case connected said let's get up to the hospital right now we knew the caregivers were there mom and dad were there and that's where we're gonna start so we went up to the hospital we questioned both mom and dad separately at length about you know tell me how you know how you come, came to find this injury um, the story was that um, the child had not been showing any discomfort any pain or anything of that nature it was as simple as on a Sunday at church mom had the little girl on her lap and had kind of been feeling her head and found a spot on her head that felt squishy and thought it was odd um, when the, when she pushed on the spot child did not show any discomfort did not cry out or anything like that but she said you know thought to herself she's got a well child check just the next day I'll bring it up to the um, physician at that time so the child already had an appointment a standing appointment with their with her pediatrician the next day so mom decided you know she doesn't seem to be in any pain right now. It doesn't seem like it's an emergency, but I, I'll bring it up to the doctor the next day. So that's what she did. She brought the child in for her well child check and brought it up to the physician. The physician said, okay, well, let, just to be safe, let's do a, an x-ray. Um, so they actually did the x-ray and let mom and daughter go because they weren't going to get the results right away and just said, I'll follow up with you when I get the results. So short time after, mom says that she was contacted by the pediatrician and said, you know what, actually there is, we found, a, we found a fracture, there's a skull fracture. What I want you to do is head up to Masonic um, to, so we can check this out further and treat her further for it. So mom contacted dad, they both brought the child up there. Um, you know, mom and dad both in their independent um, interviews just described just being shocked, just just shocked that, that she has this fracture, that they didn't know she was hurt, that, you know, that she wasn't acting any differently. Um, but then to go through the skeletal survey and then to learn further that there is there is another fracture um, that is there that is healing no no idea time frame of, of when it could have occurred um, but it's again another significant injury on a little one um, so as we took mom and dad through those interviews we 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 questioned them extensively we they, we had them take us back over the pre previous week so we went day by day with each of them over what was her routine what was going on that day is there anything you can think of any falls any accidents anything of that nature we had nothing. Now, in talking to him, we learned that the other caregivers for this little one involve at a home daycare, as well as a grandparent who takes care of her once a week. So we felt good just just where we stood with the parents and how they presented. We, we felt good about letting the little one go home with them. We didn't... We, I didn't have the sense that, you know, somebody's not being forthcoming or, you know, the other piece of this was too that the doctor we were working with and consulting on this presented us with, this could be abusive, it could also be accidental, but someone should know what caused this injury. So when we left the parents, we, we let it be known that it was okay for the child to be released to their care. We knew that now we needed to go on and interview the next, the other two caregivers, which would be grandma and then the daycare provider who has her four times a week. Um, so we interviewed grandma first, called her in very cooperative, um, had her take her, us through the day there was one day during that week that she had her from beginning to end you know tell us about the you know the day was there any time that you know she had an accident a fall anything like that or that you found her to be inconsolable or could have missed something no 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 okay you know do you have any concerns about your son and daughter-in-law do you think there could have been anything that happened in their care no I do not think there's anything that would have happened in their care okay so went on to the daycare provider um, and this all take, took place over the course. The interviews with mom and dad and the grandparent were within two days. I mean, the response to, to 
to the parents was immediate. Um, but um, it, we had a little bit of a delay getting to the daycare provider because she was on vacation at the time that we received the report. So the week following when she had returned, we contacted her and just said, you know, they, we need to talk to you about um, an injury on a kiddo that you take care of. And she was very cooperative, allowed us to come out myself, the investigator, and actually the daycare licensing worker um, for her home came out. Um, and, and same thing, went through that week as best she could remember, you know, take us through her regular routine, what kind of a kid is she usually, if she gets hurt, what does she do, those sorts of things. Um, we landed with her with probably a stretch of an explanation for a skull fracture. Um, the, the best that the daycare provider could think of was that there was a day where her own 18 month old had taken a wooden toy car and, and, and struck the child um, in the head with it. Is it likely that a 18 month old could have the amount of force, you know what I mean, it takes um, to cause a skull fracture? Probably not, um, and that is where that case ended. Um, we actually, we have these cases, and these are probably the most frustrating cases for me, when you land with a serious, significant injury on a child, and you end with no explanation for how it had occurred. Um, you know, it was my sense in this specific situation that somebody had brutally harmed this child? No. You know what I mean? Was it that, you know, in knowing from the doctors and the experts that this could have been an accidental injury on someone's watch, you know what I mean? And so to land with, yeah, we don't really know, you know what I mean? And, and probably less frustrating for me than for the parents, you know what I mean? To kind of have that, okay, well, we don't really, we don't really know what happened. And so how I concluded that case, because at the end of an investigation, you make a finding either abuse or neglect occurred or no abuse or neglect did not occur. Um, in these types of cases, um, we make a finding of maltreatment, abuse occurred, unknown offender because we we were never you know we, we know from the significance of the injury on the child that something happened but unknown offender because we were never able to prove who or you know what I mean or what was done so 